The story is um, about the last Christmas gift I received from my mother, and it was a sweater. And for years and years and years, it sat on the shelf of my closet, and it was associated with guilt and the end of my childhood and, and everything else. It's almost like the sweater wanted to be taken off the shelf. In late 2007, Have you read this yet? Glenn Beck assembled his staff in New York City for a series of meetings to figure out how to get this deeply personal story off the shelf and somehow shape it into what will likely be the most challenging and rewarding project of his entire career. The stage show is uh, actually an adaptation of a book that I've been writing uh, that will come out next Christmas and coincide with this. We knew he had a great story, but that's all we had. Initially, we were really concerned about how do we pull it off. I don't know. It's the only thing that I have done that I'm willing to put the big chips up on the table. He does think big. He thinks big. I just have faith in this one. I just, it's a story that's supposed to be told. But telling it will be an epic task. Behind me will be two screens off to the side and up and then one giant screen. With multiple video screens projecting a visually stunning mix of film, like that. images, yeah. and animation. Like that. That, uh, Plus elaborate staging, lighting, and sound. This is a live movie. And even a live orchestra playing an original score. This tour will be unprecedented for Beck in almost every way. It's gonna be tough. Especially in terms of cost. What I want to do is, is build the ultimate stage show, and then when we realize that'll cost us $15 million, then we'll start to find cheaper ways to do it. But at the center of this universe, as always, is a bundle of raw emotion that even decades later is never far from the surface. I watched in silence as she picked up the sweater. As if it was an injured kitten, she slowly folded it and placed it on top of the dresser. I didn't know how much my mother believed in the magic of Christmas until I saw it die for her in a rumpled ball on the floor of my bedroom. The emotion is real. This thing is a minefield all the way through. I think we went through 150 pages of the script and they counted 15 times. The story itself is also real. It was almost as if it wouldn't let me not tell the truth. But the most pressing reality at the moment... This one might put me into bankruptcy. ...is the budget. I don't have anything really to do with the, with the money other than to watch uh, with glee as uh, Rich's head <laughs> starts to explode. Let's not make this a for-profit division of Mercury. Why don't we make it a not-for-profit division of Mercury Radio Arts? <laughs> you think tickets have to be about $800 a piece. Don't laugh. Turns out live musicians aren't cheap. We had to make several decisions over the last few days, and as each decision kept going, um, I kept getting farther and farther away from um, music. And then when Anthony, who has been composing music and wouldn't let me hear anything, I explained to him what I wanted it to feel like. And he said, I want to just play it for you. And so we brought a few musicians in. But that's when it just clicked. He nailed it. Um, he nailed it. And for Glenn Beck and his crew, nailing it is the only option. I want you to feel it. I want you to hear it. It was a story meant for everybody. It's a universal story of Christmas. I just want it to wash over you. I can't wait to share it. Because it's so vivid and so personal. All senses. And you can smell the Christmas pancakes. <laughs> I don't know if I captured it. Um, but uh, you'll, hopefully you'll feel something you've never felt before. In every life, there are shining moments and darkest hours. But what if you could turn back time? What if you could correct your worst mistake? What if you could have a second chance to see what lies beyond the darkness? 
next Christmas. You can. Two years in production. A lifetime in the making. The Christmas sweater. Everywhere. Christmas 08.